and welcome back to it. It is homegrown with myself, Bongani Drama, right here on CTVSA, home of children aspiration and inspiration as well. Now, on this episode, we have uh, Dr. Tom Mugaya, who's going to be, you know, chatting to us a little bit today. Tell us a little bit more about uh, your background, where you're from, and how you grew up. I'm originally from, from Kenya. I've been uh, in South Africa for more than 20 years. Um, I was born in a little village, somewhere in a village uh, near Lake Victoria. For those who know a little bit of the... Um, Victoria Falls. Vic uh, no, v Victoria, Lake Victoria is mm. in is the central part of, uh, of Africa. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's where I was born, uh, in a little village, and that is where I uh, did my studies before finally coming to South Africa to do my postgraduate training as a gynecologist obstetrician. That's amazing. Now, tell me about your siblings, about you know growing up. How was it growing up in Kenya? Uh, it was very exciting. I grew up in a large family. Um, uh, we are eight. My parents were blessed with eight children, oh. and I'm the seventh born. Oh, nice. Yeah. And just just when you thought you were the last born and just when I was sort of thought I was the last born and then the then the last one came. I still <laughs> I still have part of uh, the last born <laughs> in myself. In yourself. Yes. Now yes. Doc, you are an you know obstetrician and a gynecologist as well. Now, you know, when you were young, did you ever think in your life that you would be, you know, in this field of study? Not at all. I never thought I was going to become a doctor. What I wanted to become was uh, and initially, when I was very young, I yes. wanted to become a teacher and become a hairdresser. But as I grew older, I wanted to become a chemical engineer. I was interested mm. in, in, in chemicals and mixing things. But as I grew older, I went to high school, then I decided, no, nah, I'm going to become a doctor. Oh, wow. Yeah. That is interesting. But as you were transitioning, right, growing older, and transitioning to all these career paths that you want to take, what was guiding you through all of it? I wanted to be successful in whatever I was going to do. Whatever mm. I decided that I was going to be successful. For me, I think it was a bit easier because my elder siblings had gone through secondary school, high school, gone to university, and then very, very many of them became doctors. So it was much nice. easier to follow their footsteps. Nice. So I knew I would do it because they've already done it. But tell me about the pressures, right? Because you find in the family that the father is probably an academic, you know, the mom's an academic, and mainly you find that the youngest in the family wants to actually become a musician or be part of the arts. You know, the pressure that the youngest has to go through, do you think that parents perhaps should be, you know, enforcing the child to be an ac academic as they are, or they should let the kids, you know, do whatever that they want to do? The advantage of being towards the end in the family is that the pressure was in my elder siblings. Ah. When uh, when I when I started going to school, I was not put under any pressure. My um, dad used to say, "Do what you want to do. Whatever it is you do, do it well." Exactly. That is the only thing I remember my dad telling me. He never told me to become a doctor. He never told me. He just told me, "Whatever you do, do it well and that excel." Just that. That's stunning, Doc. Yeah. All right, folks, don't forget that this episode is proudly sponsored by Profound Confidence Center in Color Drive. We believe that your business is our very first priority. Now, Doc, for someone who doesn't know, right, someone growing up and uh, really want to find what an, you know, obstetrics and a gynecologist is, the difference between the two, really? Obstetrics and gynecology. Obstetrics is normally very difficult to pronounce. Yeah. And I always tell people one of the reasons why I decided to become an obstetrician is yeah. because I could not pronounce oh. that one. So I decided I'm going to do this thing that I cannot be able to pronounce. <laughs> Obstetrics, when one falls pregnant, they have to be taken care of through the journey of pregnancy up to the time of delivery and after delivery. Mm. So obstetrics is the science and the study of taking care of somebody who is a mom who has fallen pregnant up to the time that they give birth. Mm -hmm. That is obstetrics. Gynecology is when you take care of um, a woman, whether she's healthy or unhealthy. So it's 
the science and practice of medicine that is dedicated to the wellness or the disease in women. Oh wow! So it, you know, obstetrics is more of really getting in, in touch until the nine months, and with gynecology is more of dealing with what is going around with women. With women, oh, especially when they are not pregnant. That is gynecology. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Now, in these fields of study, Doc, what are you taught when it comes to practicals? What are you really taught? First of all, you have to become a doctor. Mm -hmm. So you have to go through the study of being a doctor. After you become a doctor, then you specialize as a gynecologist. Oh, nice. Simply put, for you to be able to study medicine, you have to understand the normal structure of the body, which is anatomy. Mm. After understanding the normal structure of anatomy, where, what is, where in the human body. And then after that, understand how, what is where in the human body, how it works. Nice. We call that physiology. It, to put it very simply, it's the biology of a human being. Mm. So you have to understand that. That is part of the practical. And I remember the first thing we did when we started medicine was to walk into a lab, and the lab had specimens, and that specimens happened to be human bodies that mm. had been preserved. So for two years, we had to cut up the human body so that we can understand what is where in the human body. That is the study of anatomy. Sure, but what happens to you, I mean, the first time walking into this, uh, you know, this place where you see dead bodies, if you might say, and uh, you have to cut them out? I remember when you walk into that room, almost 5% of the people walk into that room, they stop doing medicine immediately. Because oh. if you can't stand the human body, we call them cadavers, we actually don't call them dead people because in your mind, it will disturb your mind. Yes, your mind will disturb you and you might yes. want not to do the study yes. anymore. Yes, they are well preserved and then some people can't stand the sight of that, then they decide Nah, medicine is not meant for me, and they stop, and they go and do somebody, something else. Mm. I remember when we started, we were 150, uh, almost 10 of my colleagues, when they saw the human body, they stopped doing medicine and went to something else, which is perfectly okay. okay. Because if you can't... Then don't do it. If you can't stand that side, don't do it. Sure, well, quite interesting. Because I wanted to be a doctor until I was cut, and there was, a, there was blood coming out of, you know, out of my body, and I stopped. I didn't want to do it again. Ever. If you can't stand blood, please <laughs> don't do medicine. Don't do medicine. All right, Doc. Now, I just want to find out, you've been in the field for what, 10 years or more, if I might say. You know, did you have to go for, say, your, you know, your more other degrees, maybe a uh, master's or a PhD further your studies? Before you become a gynecologist, you have to do medicine, mm -hmm. basic medicine, which takes five years, mm -hmm. six years, actually. And then after that, so you get, uh, you become a doctor of medicine. And then after that, you go and uh, do practicals, which we call community service. Mm -hmm. And then after that, go for a master's in, uh, in obstetrics. Now, after being a doctor, then you go and specialize to become a gynecologist, which takes another minimum of four years. Oh, nice. And then after that, you can sub-specialize, which takes another two years. That's about more than 10 years of studying. That is more than 10 years, actually, around 12 years of studying. Around 12 years of studying. And, yeah, because a lot of people really think that, you know, you go to university for five years and then you, you know, go become a doctor. It doesn't work that way. No, it doesn't. By the time you become an obstetrician gynecologist, you need to have studied for a minimum of, um, a minimum of 12 years. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. And in between there, it's important to take a break or so, so that you can really decide what is really important that you need to do. Ah, yeah. so you need to take a break. And how important is this break? Because I believe that a lot of people perhaps don't take the break and they go into it not even understanding what you know they really wanted to do. So how important is the break? As the saying goes, in life it's always good to go and breathe, taking um, a little bit of a break before mm. you continue. Mm. So that break is important for you because you've been studying medicine for five, six years. Yeah. So you need to take a break and decide, do you want to study further? Do you, and if you have to study further, what is it that you want in studying further? Absolutely. Yes, because some people go and study particular disciplines because they think it's, it is well paying mm. and they follow where 
why they pick this money, which unfortunately does not give them after two or three or five years. Once you choose a particular path, it's you for life. So you have to choose what you want, what you like, and what your gut tells you. So taking that break will make you uh, refocus and decide what you want to do. Amazing. That's stunning. Now, Doc, you mentioned that, and it's quite interesting because, you know, in, you find in most, uh, say, in families where you are pressurized that after varsity, you need to initially get a job. So what happens to, say, a Bongani drama that, you know, finishes school and they want to take this gap. However, back home, they're telling them to go to school or to find a job, rather. What happens to them? What happens to me that I'm taking this break? To sort of you know find my foot into the medicine world whether i want to be a gynecologist or i want to you know deal with solely medicine what happens to me if my family is pressurizing me to say go and find a job uh, the advantage of medicine is when you take that gap it is a gap where you can still continue practicing mm. go to a community hospital somewhere go to um, a public hospital somewhere go and work with a general practitioner you can still earn a living during that gap period. The only mm -hmm. thing that you do is that you continue to work, you continue to get paid, but at least you're just doing the thing that you've learned before you jump into studying again. Absolutely. Because once you start, jump into study, studying again, then you start studying. And once mm -hmm. you do that, then you can't, you can still sit somewhere and change. Some people have changed in the middle, All right. three or four years. But once you take that gap where you continue working as a doctor, or oh, is it pediatric, obstetrics, orthopedic, pedic, well, everything. And then you say, hmm, okay, I'll probably want to specialize in this, if you want to specialize. Ah. I've got colleagues who immediately finished medicine, they went, they practiced, they decided, okay, this is not meant for me. They went and became stock brokers. Oh, wow. Hey, that's amazing. That's quite interesting. Yeah. Now, Doc, tell me, you know, uh, just lastly, what is fulfilling about your career? There are many aspects. Being, one, being a doctor, is in itself fulfilling. When you're a doctor, somebody comes into you. You see people who are healthy and people who have disease. Mm -hmm. So if somebody who is healthy comes to you just to valid, to confirm that they're fine, so they come for general checkup, they, and then after examining them and doing some tests, you tell them, you know what, you are healthy, and in future, we probably will have a child, and the future can be tomorrow, it can be nice. three years. Nice. That is already very fulfilling. Nice. They, that being told that you're healthy and you can even have children, that when you look at that woman on the face, you know, mm, okay, that's good. It's fulfilling and it's fulfilling. Mm. Now, in, in obstetrics, walking through the pregnancy journey with a woman who's pregnant, mm. and finally delivering a healthy baby and giving the mom the healthy baby, oh, wow. and holding that baby for the first time, if you look at the mom's eyes, that excitement mm. gives us a lot of fulfillment, gives me a lot of fulfillment. Sure, Doc, that is amazing. And just lastly now to, you know, the up-and-coming young ones watching right on CTVSA that will probably want to be, you know, uh, one day obstetrics or be, you know, gynecologist. What do you have to say to them? Nothing comes easy. You have to work hard. You have to be focused. And uh, if you put your mind in it, you'll probably reach there. And one, when you're choosing your studies, the, uh, the, the, uh, the subjects that you have to take, you have to do a relation biology, anything that will be able to take you to medicine. If mm. you are interested in becoming a doctor, dentist, a gynecologist, you have to be biased towards science. Mm. Mm. All right, Doc, thank you so much, actually, for coming in, you know, sitting with us right on Homegrown on CTVSA. And all the best to that. Thank, thank you very you much. much. All righty, folks, that was another episode of Homegrown with myself, Bongani Drama Writer on CTVSA. Don't forget that this episode was probably sponsored by the Profound Conference Center, right here at Collab Drive, where we believe that your business is our first priority. Please follow us on all our social media platforms on Twitter at CTV South Africa, on Facebook, CTVSA, and Instagram as well, CTVSA. Subscribe to our YouTube channel that is CTV so we can find out of our next episode of Homegrown with myself, Bongani Drama. Till next time, bye bye.